Hello guys, welcome to another video on my channel. In this one I want to make a start to a little series in which I want to explain some of the basics of SFS, starting with uh, this and then maybe um, going until how to get to the moon or how to get to Mars. So today we are going to start with what all of the blocks in SFS do, so what you can use them for. Um, so let's get started. We're going to start with something that all rockets need, fuel. These white blocks are fuel tanks. Um, you need them in every rocket and uh, the more of them you have, the more fuel you have. But watch out because if you put too many compared to how much engines you have, it's going to be too heavy and you won't be able to lift half. You have the normal engines which are at the basics where I am now. Uh, and then you have for six white you have the, the, the bigger fuel tanks and you can also connect them and then they will automatically um, make a smooth line. Then another very important thing for all rockets are engines. These are uh, In this game we have these three engines which this one is the biggest, this one uh, the middle and this one is the smallest and the bigger your engine the more thrust it will produce, but also the more fuel it will, it will need to burn. So these smaller ones don't have just as much thrust, but they do um, use less fuel. So if for example you want to land on the moon, you c it's best to use this middle engine, because it doesn't really uh, do too much, so you can make small uh, little changes, so you don't and, and without using too much fuel. The next thing that is very important is uh, a capsule. A capsule makes you able to control a rocket. Without a capsule you can't control it, but when you go to other you also have this um, control port. And um, it's, it's basically it does the same as the capsule, but it's just a bit compacter and for some projects it's, um, it's more beautiful, it, ma it makes uh, the build look better. Um, but these two you always need to have on your rocket, either one of them, you don't need to have both of them. Then what we also have, we have this thing, it's called a separator. It can separate the bottom part of your rocket with the top part, or actually it can just separate two parts. But what is most important about it, when you put a engine on top of the separator, and then on top of that engine you put a fuel tank again, then um, you can separate these two parts, making the bottom part uh, fall off when it's out of fuel, um, which will make the rocket lighter, and then you can continue with only this part, um, making you have way more delta V. If you don't know what delta V is, I will put a link to a video uh, on the upper right of your screen right now. So now when you launch this thing, and you start one of the engines, first of all you can't see uh, this engine in, uh, in the middle, that is on top of the separator. You can only see it after you have separated. So let's say uh, I have started this engine, but it has now run out of fuel. Then what I do, normally of course the engine would automatically turn off. I would separate it, and I would start the second engine. And now the other part falls away, making this part way lighter. And um, by that making it able to go farther. There is also an other separator, which is this separator. It's also in the basics part of, um, of all your parts you can choose from. And this is a separator you use to separate side boosters. So let's say you've got this rocket, but it doesn't go far enough. Then what you can do, you can put these two on the sides, two of these on the sides. Then you put fuel tanks next to it. And now what you can do is you can make other engines to it. Um, of course, <laughs> I want to make it symmetric, because that looks way better, of course. So, like this. And now when I would launch, I can put on these two. And um, then when, when they are out of fuel, I can uh, separate the things clicking on these two things. Uh, I accidentally clicked on something right here. But I'm going to show it again. So let's say... These are out of fuel, alright? Then you click on these two, they will separate. And then you click on this one again, and then you can basically start with your rocket 
um, further up than you would without the side boosters, which is actually very handy because this makes you able to go further. Um, this though isn't very uh, aerodynamic, so what you can do to improve that, you can go to the aerodynamics section, then you can choose one of the aerodynamics which you think fits the best for this rocket. So you can also check with one you think is the best. I'm now going to use this. And um, the, these make the rocket way more aerodynamic, making it able to go a little bit further inside of the atmosphere. Next up, landing legs. So let's say you want to land on a celestial body um, and you have got this, this little thing, this is your lander. Um, you, you could land it like this, but um, it wouldn't be able to absorb a um, hefty impact. So what you can do to improve it is you can put a landing leg on both sides. But if I would put it like this on both sides, it wouldn't really work because um, as you can see one of the parts disappears. But also these landing legs will both go the same way. So what you need to do, you need to click on this one, you need to select it. And then on the bottom right of my screen, you can see um, a couple options. You can rotate it, um, but you can also mirror it uh, either upside down or side to side. So like this, I have mirrored it. And now when I place it right next to my uh, fuel tank, it will um, sit there and the fuel tank will still be there. And then when you launch, uh, you will see that if you click on them, they extend. And they can make your uh, rocket stand on landing legs and also land on them. But you have to watch out because if this little engine would have been the biggest engine, the Hawk engine, then um, the landing legs are, sh are too short actually. So you have to be careful with that. Next up are the docking ports. You can find them in the other section. Um, and they are the most uh, top part, these ones. So let's say you've got this rocket and you want to fly a satellite into orbit. You can connect that satellite to your rocket by docking ports. Docking ports are basically, you could see them as magnets, which connect um, two parts together, um, but you can separate them uh, by clicking them. So you put one docking port, then you get the other one and you either rotate it twice or you mirror it upside down and then you put it on top of the other. And now you can build your satellite on here, for example, just like so. Of course, it's not the most beautiful satellite, but it's fine for now. So let's say I've got it like this and I'm into orbit. Then what I do, I click on, uh, on the two separators and they will separate. As you can see now, you can't really see it, um, but it says now docked to the surface of the Earth. Um, so that means they were separated. Let me just go like this then I can show that they do actually separate so I'm going to go like this and then I'm going to shut this off actually like this so now you see they separate and when you do this in orbit they kind of fly away from each other because they they kind of like push each other away but let's say you want to get the satellite into orbit this isn't really aerodynamic so what you can do you can go to the sections of building you can go to fairings and you will see these black parts. Basically what these do, they will protect um, your rocket or a part of your rocket. And you also have these six whites and the smaller ones. So what you can do, you can uh, cover it uh, in your fairings. Um, just like so. And um, Right now you can actually see the fairings um, and you can see through them. When I launch you won't, you will only see white uh, things as I will show here. And what I can do um, when I'm into orbit, so I'm out of the atmosphere, uh, so I don't really have any drag anymore. I can click on them and they will split in two, leaving my uh, payload um, just open to the, to the uh, space I guess. So as you can see, when I click them, they separate. And uh, this is very nice to protect it. <laughs> of course, right now I'm on the surface of the Earth, so they just fall and collapse into my rocket 
breaking it, but this won't work when you're up into an orbit. At basics, on the top of all your parts, there is also this thing. This is a parachute. So let's say you're entering the atmosphere of the Earth and you want to land safely without using any engine power, you can use one of these parachutes. You'll actually have two of them when you go to aerodynamics. You also see this thing. This is also a parachute, but it's just a bit uh, compacter and it can go on the side of, for example, fuel tanks. And these will just um, launch a parachute as soon as you click on them. Uh, parachutes can not um, be opened in vacuums, so they cannot be opened in space or above the surface of the moon. Because the surface of the moon doesn't have an atmosphere and neither have some planets. But for example Mars does have an atmosphere, so you can open a parachute in there. Another part of uh, another section, section of all your building parts is uh, structural. It's hard for me to pronounce because I'm Dutch, I'm not a native speaker, but when you click on it, you just see these uh, three things. They are basically iron beams, one a bit bigger than the other. And they basically do nothing than connecting parts together. So example for a rover, you could use this. Um, they, they don't do a lot, they just connect things. When you go to other, you will also see um, these things. They are called RGS thrusters and they are basically tiny rocket engines that work in uh, all ways. So they can, for example, rotate your rocket, they can move it around um, by just very little corrections. So for example, you can't really use this as the only source of power on your rocket. Um, but because I, I'm now going to demonstrate how they work, and I'm going to use this very small rocket, so um, for now they probably can totally lift it, but I will just show you. You click on uh, one of them, doesn't matter which one, and then all of them will activate. And then you can see this controller on the, uh, on the, the bottom of my screen, and um, when I click on them, it moves it around. When I click on two, uh, two of the um, arrows on the side, the whole rocket moves to that side. Uh, so like this. Of course, in space this works way better. When I only click on one of the uh, arrows on the right or left, it will rotate that way. I can't right now because I'm just too uh, heavy and I'm not in an orbit. When I click either on, uh, either on the up or the down uh, things, your rocket will normally go up or down. But again, because I'm, uh, I'm on the Earth and I have gravity, I can't right now because they are actually only, only used for very small corrections. Another thing we have in the part other are these, uh, excuse me, these things. Um, they are solar panels. And they don't really have a function other than looking cool. Uh, until they will uh, release a new power system. So you will also have batteries and stuff and then you can charge them using the solar panels. But that isn't yet out. So when I launch uh, and I click on the solar panels, they will expand. And this is for example very cool on a space station or just other rockets going to some planet or the moon. In other, we also have wheels. So as you can see, um, I now have used the structural things. Then when I place wheels on it, it is basically, uh, and I put a control on it, I can um, drive it. And the wheels uh, don't use any fuel, which is very nice because you don't need a lot of fuel to, for example, make a rover on the moon. Um, to activate them, you click on them, but for this one you have to click on all of the wheels that you want to activate. So they don't all activate when you click one. And then you can just use your normal arrow keys on the bottom of your screen to basically make the wheels work. And as you can see my little rover thingy is driving around. So that was it guys. I think I've covered all of the parts in SFS. If I didn't, please let me know in the comments if you are missing one of them. Um, but for now I think I'm done. So thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, please leave a like on the video. And if you don't want to miss any of the future episodes on uh, the beginner tutorials on SFS, then subscribe to my channel and hit the bell. And you will get notified every time I upload a new one of them. So that was it. I hope you enjoyed. 
Uh, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one. So thank you, and bye-bye.